Today I want to take a look at how to connect to SharePoint Online using the classic client ID and client secret method. Now this is something that's helpful to know about for support and legacy PowerShell code and just kind of awareness for how a security principle can be created with SharePoint Online. The first thing we we'll do from our SharePoint Online site is we'll come over here to site contents and we'll view this article on Medium about how to grant permissions. There are two steps. There's App Invite and App Reg New. The App Reg New needs to happen first as a way of creating the principle. Then we invite it to give permissions. So what we're going to do is change this piece of our URL from View LSTS to App Reg New. App Reg New is the name of the page where we can register a new app. And on that, all we really have to do is give it a description. So we'll hit the Generate button twice. That'll go ahead and give us an ID and a secret. And here we give it a name like PMP PowerShell. From there, we can give it a domain like localhost and a URL like HTTPS localhost. These are perfectly acceptable when working with PowerShell. These are generated automatically, really leaving the middle title to be the only input you need. We'll go ahead and click Create and that generates a new app principle. Doesn't use it anywhere, just creates it. What we wanna do is copy the ID and the secret over to our programming code. So here we have a PowerShell file and we're gonna go ahead and add a multi-line comment using the less than and greater than symbols. And we'll take the client ID and we're going to copy that down to the client ID line and we're going to take the client secret, same thing, copy that down as well. The site that we're connecting to specifically, we want to go ahead and get the full address for, make that part of our connect command, clean this up a little bit, and there we go. That's basically how we connect using a client ID and secret. We'll go ahead and run the code. Now when we run the code, we're going to get an error message at the bottom here that says 403 forbidden. The reason for that's simple. We never granted permissions, and we need to do that. So if we come back over to our browser, instead of app reg new, we want app invite. That's going to be app inv. And what inv will do is invite. So here we can look up the code number for our app ID. That'll pre-fill the things we had typed in before by giving it an ID. And down here, we need an XML manifest of what permission we're granting. That's where this Medium article comes in handy. It's fantastic. We want to do full control at a site collection level. And you'll see here in the scope that it has slash site collection. And that's its way of kind of indicating where this permission is applied. There's an alternative one up here for tenant-wide, if that's what you need. It really comes down to use cases. Are you doing this for a single site? Are you doing it for the entire SharePoint Online tenant? Both are possible. After you put in the XML, we're going to go ahead and hit the Trust button, and that will register it into the site where it's ready for usage. So now we come back and run our command. What we see is we get a PMP context. And from here, we can do all the cool stuff. You know, things like format table auto size for get PMP list. These are all the lists that are on the current web. It's showing you the URL. That URL matches what we use for our connection. This is the easiest way to get up and running. Very simple. Thanks for watching.